the deferred MBA. If you're an MBA aspirant, you must have come across this term at some point or the other, but you really understand it. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little more about the deferred MBA and also make a case for why it's a great option for a final year student or one who's a fresh graduate. My name is Anand Venkateshan. I'm the founder of MentorsCapital.com. We use the power of mentorship to assist students in their study abroad dreams. So I'm going to talk about why the deferred MBA is such a good option, right? But first, what comes to mind when you think of an Ivy League MBA? Well, you're obviously start thinking of some of the top names in management like Harvard, Stanford, Chicago Booth, Yale, Virginia Darden, uh, Berkeley Haas, and many, many other such uh, hugely popular, hugely impressive names. But does the deferred MBA also have that kind of a impressive list? It turns out that yes, most of the top 20 schools in the US also offer the students the deferred MBA option. And not just that, you're also looking at one right down our corner, which is the Indian School of Business, their deferred MBA option is called the Young Leaders Program. Various MBA uh, B schools have different names for that effort MBA option. Harvard calls it the 2 plus 2 and, and so on and so forth. But the point remains the same. This is the deferred MBA option that we're talking about that we're going to discuss in this video. Let's know a little bit more about the deferred MBA. Well, the basics are that you join a deferred MBA. It's a two-year full-time full program. And, and when you join one, you're going to study as part of the full-time batch. It's not going to be a separate, separate batch for you guys. You join the main cohort, right? So that's one big plus. And you get to join the, uh, you know, start your MBA two to five years after you graduate, right? And the expectation is that you get admission in your final year or, or fresh out of college, but you get a conditional admit saying that you need to gain a minimum of two years and, and it could stretch as much as five years in the case of some others, right? So, so that's the window that you need to work and then you get uh, to start your MBA program, although the admission is given to you uh, when you apply in your final year of college. That's one big plus. Uh, who can apply? Well, I've already said that it's, you need to be a final year student or one who's just completed graduation. Maybe you found a job uh, uh, and you'd like to consider applying and get that thing out of your way. And, and one other important thing is obviously that the process remains the same as that of the full-time MBA, but uh, the timelines are a little different. So therefore, the MBA option is typically, you know, considered by schools uh, in their later rounds, right? Which means that you apply along with round three for the fall term, uh, which typically falls in the month of March, right? Give or take a month. Uh, so that's when you apply, right? So, so I mean, I hope some of you guys are have brightened up at this news because if you're a cat aspirant, you're going to cat take cat in November, uh, whether it goes well or not, whether the you know colleges work out or not, you can build your candidature for a deferred MBA to be done, you know, to be applied later the next year, right? Early in the next year, rather. Uh, so, so that's uh, one, uh, you know. Uh, that's one option if you're a, if you're an MBA aspirant. But even otherwise, I'd, I'd make a case for why you can actually singularly target the deferred MBA. Well, let's understand why. So if you're a college student uh, and, and if you're targeting one of the Ivy League MBAs, then, then there are many questions in your mind, right? And uh, Is the deferred MBA as good as the full-time MBAs? Uh, do I get as much out of it as I would if I join the normal route? Uh, uh, is it is it even as good as doing an MBA from India, right? Those, those are questions which obviously rank on you. And, and I'm not going to compare everything under the sun, right? Obviously, you need to consider the cost factor. You need to consider the ROI factor when you apply for any MBA program, be it in India or abroad. Uh, but uh, let's compare apples to our apples, right? So, so let's say we look at the full-time MBA and the deferred MBA option and put them side to side and look at some pros and cons, right? Now, uh, what I've done is I've looked at each of those admission criteria for a, a full-time MBA. Uh, and if you're considering one of the top 20 schools in the US, pretty much the best in the world in the field of management, then what they look for in a candidate is, first of all, most of them will require around, you know, a medium number of, medium number of five years of experience. 
they also require uh, a very very high gmat score slash a very very high gpa right so so average as well 3.7 is just a number you're you're thinking high threes right broadly speaking and uh, obviously just 5 years of experience isn't enough some of the top programs will require that your quality of experience also be great whether it's a you know top brand you worked with or or the new startup you know which is doing really really well or at the other end that you've actually worked in a small setup but have gained a lot of responsibility right you've essayed a role which has quite a bit of leadership potential in it right so that's uh, the quality of experience and the display of its merit in your application they also look at uh, you know how clear are your long term goals and how you've sort of planned your career so far and and how mba fits into that mix right so it's not isolation there needs to be a plan in place and finally they also look at you know the leadership potential that you bring to the table because that's the most important that we scoot right they want to see that you have the potential you have uh, the all rounder uh, capabilities as well as empathy and and other things that go into making a truly great leader so they they want to see that potential and that impact in your application which you notice is that uh, you know the way i've compared this in this table most of this comes out of your work experience right so so when you are applying for an ivy league school most of your applications going to scream how good your experience was and and obviously one part of it is college but most of it is work the deferred mba on the other hand doesn't put so much emphasis on work because obviously you haven't you know gained that kind of ex experience right which means that a you need to gain a minimum of 2 to 3 years of experience right you don't have to rush through uh, and and apply when you are three year when you have three years of experience you can apply early and then dream of joining as little with as little as three years of two to three years of experience gpa requirement is pretty much the same but here's where it becomes different right the other par parameters like you know goal clarity like uh, the potential for leadership that you display the uh, <clears throat> you know the uh, the managerial capability that you bring to the table all of this will be judged on the basis of the positions that you hold in various clubs and societies the initiatives you've taken you know to to improve better your immediate community and environment uh, the kind of projects and internships you've done in the core area of your interest right that align with your career goals and and how you've planned you know various interventions in your life so far to lead to you towards a particular goal in the future right so so that's what is evaluated sounds very similar to an mba uh, application or an mba admission process in india where you know most people are pressured and that's what they uh, it tends to be evaluated right so so one the playing field is sort of level you you, you know you are evaluated at the same kind of things albeit at a different you know level the competition has at a different level so the question you want to ask yourself about a deferred mba when considering at least the question of one is that do you feel that your college experience has been outstanding right and and i mean outstanding from a holistic purpose uh, do you have good grades right uh, uh, roughly uh, 75 80% if if not if more definitely helps do you have a great gmat score can you get one and see do you have other responsibilities and other initiatives on your cv or your resume that that scream out ex excellence that scream out impact well then the deferred mba is definitely suited to your uh, you know to your mind to your uh, personality and your cv uh a couple of facts which uh should further endear the deferred mba one uh most people i know who go for a deferred mba tend to plan for it in advance right so if you're in your pre final year second year third year of college uh start thinking about the deferred mba early because you get the advantage of you know planning for it ahead of time right there's plenty of time as it is but your three year in college uh, especially in the earlier years and and if you consider this option early you can also plan your interventions for maybe one maybe two years of college and make sure that you tick all the boxes that the admission uh, you know committee is going to evaluate that's number one number two you can be better prepared and i i mean pretty much the application and the and the testing requirement right you you simply have more time uh, applying uh, you know preparing for the test uh, than others who will be working right so so the full time cohort is going to find it really challenging to take the gmat prepare for it uh, you on the other hand are in college you have the luxury of time you can 
you can get this part done. This course anyway valid for five years. Uh, so you might as well get the GMAT out of the way and also plan it in a manner where you leave enough time, uh, you know, besides the semester exams and all the work you do in college, you leave enough time to, to prepare your application. Because remember, the applications take time, right? Uh, and number three, the timelines are easier on you, right? The CAT comes in November in India, but if you're applying to a regular B school uh, abroad, let's say the Ivy Leagues in the US or, or somewhere other than the US, then typically the window that you're applying for is, uh, you know, starting from the month of August, September, all the way till about December, Jan, right? The later rounds are obviously can be as late as March, uh, but March is when you apply for your deferred MBA program, right? Which means it gives you an additional three months uh, where you can, you can actually add more experience to your CV and, and present it in the application, right? So it's, it gives you more time to apply, gives, you know, gives your makes your job of at least uh, of isolating each of those tasks, profile building to the uh, final application much easier, right? That's why the deferred MBA is great. And if you're still not convinced, I'm going to just throw some numbers at you. Uh, and I'm sure at the end of the day, you're going to see the uh, real impact. Uh, number one, the Harvard, uh, you know, 2 plus 2 program. It turns out that the selection rate at a Harvard 2 plus 2 is as high as 8.6%, right? Now, uh, you know, it doesn't sound that great. I'm sure it doesn't to you. But the fact is 1 in 11 students are getting selected, right? 1 in 11 applicants are getting selected by Harvard. That's astonishing, right? You wouldn't think getting into one of the top schools across the world would be this easy, right? It's a fascinating, fascinating ratio. So that's number one. It's not as hard as you think, right? Number two, the ratio of applicants, right? For every five applicants to the full-time MBA at Harvard, you have one applicant for the deferred MBA program, right? So, so you're competing against one-fifth the pool and the selection ratio is much, much higher, right? So if this doesn't convince you for a deferred MBA option and you're still considering one of the Ivy League schools in the US, I don't know what else will. Uh, so, so keep that in mind and, and, uh, and obviously uh, start your preparation early. All right, so so I think I've made my case for the deferred MBA. I'll add more uh, to the story as uh, you know as we go through, run through the weeks. But quickly, a word about ourselves. Uh, you know, I've told you we are a mentorship platform. We really believe in the power of mentorship and and would like to unlock it for your benefit. Uh, the way it works is that we have a panel of mentors, right? Uh, actually, hundred plus mentors coming from diverse fields, diverse backgrounds. Uh, so so we can basically match you with a mentor who fits your profile. Uh, and, and you can get advice from uh, them about, you know, their experience and, and try to match it with your own. And, and I'm sure you'll get specific answers uh, to the queries that you have, right? And when and these are practical answers. These are, not, uh, these are not coming out of thin air, right? So just visit the platform and try to find one. Uh, well, what we do provide is besides mentorship, we help you with the GMAT preparation. Uh, and we also help you create the full application. Uh, from college selection to, you know, crafting those essays, SOPs, LOR, um, and, and even applying for aid. And, and, well, if you come to us late enough, we can also help you with the interviews. We can also help you with some of the later assessments like video assessments and, and essays and so on and so forth. So that's, that's the gamut of services we offer. If you have any questions or if you'd like to know more about uh, something specific about the deferred MBA, then you can write me an email uh, at, at the given address. You can also drop me a text uh, on WhatsApp, the numbers flashing on your screen. All of this is also mentioned in the description given in the link below. You can also uh, register there uh, for a trial session of, of GMAT or GRE or uh, even for a free counseling session, right? I hope you like this video. Do hit the subscribe button. Do, uh, you know, like our channel. And I hope to see you again very, very soon. Thank you. Have a great day.